Welcome in to sportsbookreview.com. This is the college football opening line show for week number three. My name is Christopher Giannini, and I'm so glad that you chose to join me this evening. We're going to get into the opening lines for a couple of the games that I found interesting, that I think we need to hit on, that I think we need to talk about, and we're going we're gonna to bring on some of these lines. This is not the only show I'm going to do this week, guys. If you've been around and you know us, you know that we do a show on Mondays, opening line show. I do the big game breakdowns on Wednesday, and then you can join me live as we get ready to kick off college football on Saturday mornings. This show, we are going to, before getting into week number three, look back a little bit at week number two. Before we do that, let me tell you about it, sportsbookreview.com. Go to SBR. Uh, you can find everything you need for your gambling needs there. We got information on these college games and so many more. We got information on the NFL, which just kicked off this week. Holy crap. Sunday evening did I spend all day doing absolutely nothing but watching the NFL. We still got baseball going on. We got any sport that you can think of over there. You want to find uh, all your gambling needs, go to sportsbookreview.com. That's the one-stop shop. You don't have to hunt around from all these different places. That's the beauty of what they do. Let's look back at week number two just a little bit. Got a couple of things we want to hit. Every week, I'm going to give you the biggest winner of the week. This week, I got three big winners. I'm going to try, now that I'm doing these shows alone, I'm going to try to give you a couple of different perspectives. I'm not just going to pick one thing. I'm going to attempt to give you perspectives from multiple different angles uh, the best I can. So I'm going to give you three winners, three losers, uh, and uh, a three single uh, week husbands. My biggest winners this week got to start with the University of Oregon going into Columbus into a hostile environment and coming away with a win. I thought they could cover the line. I, I didn't have the stones to, to, to put anything on the money line. I thought 14 points was too big. I don't think Ohio State's defense is very good. And, uh, and, and Oregon kind of exposed that. Without their best two defensive players, Oregon was able to wrangle and control and contain this Ohio State offense. I don't think Ryan Day is, is getting – worse or or, or digressing I I know these receivers are wide open all day I think CJ Stroud is struggling greatly with accuracy right now I don't know if it is a the game was just a little too big for him I'm not sure uh, what what happened but I know that he had the I mean these are the best wide receivers in the country in college football they were getting open they were doing their job Defense didn't do their job. CJ wasn't good enough. They got to get better at Ohio State. Winners this week, Oregon. Second biggest winners. And this might be the the biggest winner of them all. The University of Arkansas. Now, I live in SEC country, and I am an SEC guy, okay? This is is the heart of where we are in college football. And and I know that people are sick of, of, of the SEC bias. Arkansas has been DFL in the SEC West for a long time. They are struggling to get conference wins. They're struggling to beat good teams. Texas, a big boy from the Big 12, about to come into the SEC and join us, but they're not here yet, decided to go into Fayetteville, and Arkansas put a country ass whooping on them. They beat the tar out of Texas. This game wasn't close, and it wasn't close quickly. We'll we'll get into some more uh, uh, news and notes and stats on this game as this thing goes through. Arkansas, th- probably the biggest winner of the weekend, in my opinion. We all thought Oregon was pretty good. We thought Ohio State was pretty good. Two pretty good teams playing one another. And, and one of them, you know, an upset happening. But it was upset by a, a team that we all thought was good. Texas, a team we thought was good. Arkansas, a team nobody thought was good. This kind of butt whipping, different, man. Just different. Home field in the SEC mattered. I told you in our preview shows, I told you on Saturday's show, Fayetteville was going to matter. Last winner of the day. 
BYU. Baby, I said the exact same thing. Provo was going to matter. That place was rocking. They have not beaten Utah since 2009. And to see the Storm and Mormons just play the way they did, they beat them up in the trenches on offense. Nobody thought they could run the ball on them. They didn't think that they could outpower the uh, defensive front of Utah because Utah's defensive front's unbelievable. These guys from BYU fight like hell. I've, I've said it all along. The hate has gone way too far, way too far on BYU. Yes, they lost a transcendent quarterback in Zach Wilson. And, and, and what they have now is not the same team that they had last year. But they have not fallen so far that we just need to just be dismissing them in these games. I think it's ludicrous. I think it's crazy. And, and I think they're much better. So those are my three biggest winners. Let's get to the losers. Talked about it early. Texas. Texas was supposed to be good. I thought after week one against a pretty good Louisiana team that Texas was a good team. At no point in time did they have a chance to win that game. I, I think they got beat from pillar to post that entire game. Second team, this one I take a little personal, okay, because this is a guy I've defended for a while, all right? I have, I have said for a while now that the hate on USC has just gone too far, okay? That everyone's wanting to fire the coaches and everyone's wanting turnover. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Clay Helton is not – the second coming of Pete Carroll, okay? But he's not that damn bad. I was wrong. I was wrong. I still stand by my fact that I don't think Stanford's a very good football team. And Stanford went to Southern Cal, and Stanford beat him up. Stanford bullied him. Stanford hung 40 on him. Stanford got beat. Stanford got beat like a drum. Scored zero points against Kansas State. Kansas State was in the fight of their life against an FCS school. What in the hell is going on in college football? It was it was totally wild. My last loser, so if I took that one a little personal, my last loser is going to be real personal, guys. My last loser is a team that actually won the football game. A team that towards the end of the game looked pretty good. My LSU Tigers. My LSU Tigers brought McNeese State in. And let me tell you, I, I had an eyeball on this game because my team, I don't I don't like supporting the pay for wins. Okay. But but it's my team. And so I had an eye on them. Our offensive line could not get a push against McNeese State. I, I don't know if you know much about McNeese State. They're a very small, not very good FCS school. If we can't push McNeese State, we will not be able to open a hole against any team in the SEC the rest of the year. There's not a, there's not a conference win that LSU will get if they can't drastically change something on offense. Now, defense seemed to look pretty good. They seemed to figure out how to tackle. But I don't know, is that just because you're tackling FCS opponents or if you're tackling, you know, you, your, your defense is getting things better. This school has a lot of talent. Their Talent's not the problem, okay? Something has happened at LSU. Something is going on at Baton Rouge. And, and I am a fan. I love this program. I got Ed Ordron. Don't know if you can see it or not. I've got Ed Ordron right behind me. I, I am a supporter of my school, and I love my school. But things are not looking pretty there. Do not be surprised if LSU comes up on the losing end of all of their SEC games. And I mean all of them, baby. It ain't getting easier the more the season goes on. Those are my three losers. I got a bad beat of the week, and I was actually holding a ticket for Memphis minus five and a half. It wasn't a big ticket, and I had done pretty well, even though if you follow my, my, my five picks that I give you guys, I'm two and three every damn week. Um, I, I bet a lot of games, and I was doing pretty good, and uh, I was willing to lose this one. I wanted to see them bust 100 on the scoreboard. I just, I just wanted to see it. I thought it was a fun, exciting game. Memphis at Arkansas State, unbelievable game. Offensive explosion galore. Memphis had like 400-something yards of offense going into halftime. They were beating the hell out of them. Then they had to hang on for dear life to keep the win. And Arkansas State scores 
with almost no time left to make it 55 to 50. And if you're holding the Memphis ticket and you're up pretty big and Arkansas gets a garbage time, late minute, last minute touchdown to, uh, to, to bust the five and a half, you win by five, the hook kills you, you lose. That's the bad beat of the weekend, guys. That, that was unbelievable to watch. If you're holding Arkansas, you got Arkansas State, you you just got bailed out completely. If you had an over ticket in this game, <laughs> man, you could have spent that money two hours before this game was over. They busted the over before halftime. This was this was just points galore. And if you like points, this was a fun game. I thought it was cool. Single game Heisman's. You know what? I'm a big boy. I remember back in the day when the Heisman Trophy used to always go to running backs. Before the game changed and it started going to quarterbacks and, and, and it was all about passing, it was all about running backs. This week, all of my single game Heismans are all going to running backs. We're, we're going to start with that Memphis game. Brandon Thomas, 18 carries, 198 yards and two touchdowns. Holy cow. What a performance. Almost 200 yards on the ground. Just just unbelievable. Going back to Oregon, Ohio State. Oregon's running back. C.J. Verdell, 20 carries, 161 yards, two TDs. Just – Ohio State could do nothing. Ohio State has talent on the defensive front. I have no idea why they are struggling so badly to, to get stops. It's – it, it baffles me that that a team with that kind of talent. But, I mean, hell, I watched my LSU Tigers. We've got better defensive talent than almost everybody in the country. And they can't stop anybody. So, at some point in time, you got to look inside Ohio State and say, what the hell are we doing different? What are we doing wrong? What do we got to do to fix it? I don't know. Oregon just ran all over you that day. And my last one, we're going back to that Arkansas game. And, and I don't know how to do this, so I'm just going to do it. I'm, I'm giving it to the, the whole running back room at Arkansas. 40 carries between five, six, seven, I think seven different guys. Really, it was four guys, and then two dudes got, got garbage time. 40 carries, 333 yards, four touchdowns. Just took the will from Texas, just stole their soul. This is what happens when you got a coach like Sam Pittman who has spent his entire life being an offensive line coach and he gets to rolling on somebody like this. He's just telling the OC, we don't stop running until they find a way to stop it. We're just going to drive it down their throat every second of the game until they can prove they can stop it. And that's what they did. Let me throw out a couple of names. I'm going to try to get these right. You basically have five guys that rolled off, I think, around 309 yards, okay, and all the touchdowns. Uh, Traylon Smith led them. K.J. Jefferson was the quarterback, second in, in running. A.J. Green, Raheem, Raheem Sanders, and Dominique Johnson. Uh, those were the five that got the bulk of the carries, and you had a couple of guys come in for, for, for some garbage time yardage as well. It, just an unbelievable display of dominating your opponent. And, and, and it kind of wasn't close, like I said. That's the recap. That's looking backwards. Didn't want to take too much time, but I want it to kind of look back so we can kind of get a basis for looking forward. Where do we start with the opening lines? I think we have to start at, in my opinion, we got two big games this weekend. Like we had two last weekend. We had Iowa, Iowa State. We had Oregon, Ohio State. I'm going to start in the one where two different conferences play one another because I think I think that matters to more of the country. I'm going to start with Auburn going to Penn State. Happy Valley. I believe this is probably going to be a whiteout game. I think Penn State is going to show up. Auburn, so far, has played two FCS schools. Now, Auburn is the number one um, most efficient offense in the country, the number one scoring defense in the country, but they haven't played anybody. Now, what that tells you is, is they're doing their job, okay? They're not in these tight, close games with these little, small, no-name schools, okay? They're, if they're supposed to kick the crap out of you, they kick the crap out of you, all right? That's just what they do. Auburn, well, let me find my numbers here. Auburn, it's almost impossible to take anything away, so I'm not going to give you any stats. They beat Bama State 
62 to nothing. All right. Like that's that was their last win. That was that was what just happened Saturday. Penn State played what I thought, this was one of my losing bets this weekend, what I thought was a pretty damn good MAC team in Ball State. MAC, uh, this is last year's MAC champion. I think they got a chance to repeat that as a MAC champion. Um, Buffalo's going to have something to say about that. A couple other MAC teams pretty tough in there as well. Uh, I, I like Ball State. I thought Penn State would have some struggles with them. They, they had none. They had absolutely none. They beat them, what was it, 44-13, to 13, and I think Ball State got all of their points in garbage time. I, I think it was middle of the fourth quarter before Ball State finally got on the board, and uh, and this game was over. If it wasn't, it was late. It was late third quarter. It, it was late, and it didn't matter. Uh, Penn State controlled this game from start to finish. So we've got Penn State playing a pretty good to real good Wisconsin team and struggling to score but coming away with the victory and then playing – a, a hell of a MAC team, but not really, you know, in the caliber of Penn State. And they've come away two and zero. They won one game tight, one game handily, and then Auburn, who's beaten the hell out of a bunch of cupcakes. I I have no idea. I thought this line was gonna open up around Penn State and a touchdown. It, it wouldn't have shocked me if it was six. It wouldn't have shocked me if it was. Seven and a half to eight. Anything bigger than that, anything smaller than that, I would have thought. I think there's something wrong here. This line, let me find it. Right, right in that wheelhouse of what I thought. I think it opened at six and a half. I know it's sitting at six and a half right now as I'm doing this video. Um, and I think that's about right. I, mainly because we don't have enough information on Auburn. There, there's a world where Auburn's not nearly as good as advertised. And Penn State's just going to roll them just like they've rolled the other two. I I don't know that we're going to get that. I think Auburn's a tough team. I think Brian Harson has proven to be a, a pretty good coach. Like I said, he's at least – I don't know that you can take any stats away from anything that they've done. He's at least doing what he's supposed to do. He's doing over what is expected. I mean, it's one thing to beat these FCS schools by 30 or 40, and they're beating them by 60. Okay, that that's that's a little different. Um, and and I, I can't tell you, I haven't watched a second of any of them because once again, I, I, I don't, I'm just not wasting my time watching the pay for wins. I mean, if you're going to bring somebody in, cut them a big ass check to kick the hell out of them. I don't care. You're not getting my views. So that's that game. Um, I, it's too early in the week for me to have an opinion about this yet. I'm, I'm going to look at some stats. I'm going to try to figure some things out about what I think about Auburn. It's just hard, and and I don't I don't know where I'm gonna land yet, but I think I had the number right where it's supposed to be. Next biggest game of the weekend, we're gonna roll to Alabama on the road to Florida. Now, I made a couple of jokes on Twitter. Look, if you want to hit me up on Twitter, I'm at Chris B G uh, you, you can find me out there. My DMs are always open, so you can send me anything you want. If you got a question, you want to say something to me, whatever. Some people say some harsh, mean things. Hurts my feelings. I cry myself sleep every night, every now and then. Um, uh, but, but I'll tell you this: the internet's not as mean of a place as it used to be. You guys are pretty nice, and 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 I'm grateful for that. If you want to to ask about a game or ask me an opinion about something that I didn't hit or, or get me to clarify on something, you, you don't have to put it out into the ethos for everyone. You can just send it directly to me, or you can put it in the ethos to everyone, and I'll, I'll either way, I'll answer it. I don't care. Um, Alabama at Auburn. I'm uh, uh, at Florida. I made some jokes about Alabama basically playing the schools of the deaf, blind, and dumb. I don't know what kind of voodoo or wizardry Bama does with their schedule. They always schedule these top 10 schools for the first game of the season at a neutral site field. They always do it. And every time that team is the worst that team has been in 10 years. Okay, happened to Florida State, happened happen now. Like, it, it always, this team is supposed to be good when we make the schedule. But they make the schedule like a decade out. And then by the time Bama plays them, that team is just complete trash. Everybody thought this was the year Miami was going to be good and this was supposed to be a competitive game. It was terrible. And then Alabama just beats the hell out of Mercer. Like, you can't take anything from that game. Uh, Saban was pissed off and angry because they didn't beat them bad enough. And and I get that, but that doesn't that doesn't mean anything. Okay. So I, I don't know that you could take anything away from what Bama's done. And I and I crap on Miami because 
Miami should have should have lost to App State. I, I I just don't think they're very good. I don't know what happened to DeAndre King, Derek King, not DeAndre. And man, I thought they were going to be good on offense. I trust that their defense is going to get better over the year. This is not about Miami. This is about Bama. This is about Florida. Florida's beat on beat up on a couple of also rans. They they didn't beat the FCS school the way they should have beaten them. It happens. Uh, they did beat up South Florida that bad. South Florida's just not a good football team. Um, I'm excited to see this game. I think this is going to be a good test for both teams. Because, like I said, I I understand Bama's supposed to be a lot better than them. All right, Bama has all the best players. They have all the best coaches. And there's no reason Bama shouldn't beat the hell out of them. I thought this line would open up around 14, maybe – you know, 12 to 13, that's kind of the world I was kind of living in. Man, 16 by Bama. I, I, I guess no number is big enough, right? Like if it opened at 21, would anybody say, oh, well, that's too much? Like like I just, I just don't know what you make a number if you're a book to get people to bet the other way against Bama. I, I will tell you this. I think it's, I think it's a few too many points. I do. I'm I'm not opposed or afraid. You guys have seen me if you've watched over the years. I'm not afraid of stepping in front of these big teams, all right? Now, I get my ass rolled over a lot, okay? It happens. But in the case of Oregon, like, you win some of them, all right? And and I like betting dogs. If you know me, I just – I think – there's one thing in this world that I'm allergic to, and that's just chalk. I'm never going to be boring, and I'm never just going to give you the right answer because I think that's boring. And, and I'm not – I'm not trying to play the antagonist. I'm not trying to 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 play the other side just for shits and giggles. I actually believe this. I I like cheering for the underdog and I always see their perspective better than I see from from the front. Because I've just never been a front runner. I've just never been a fan. I don't know that I've ever had my teams be that good, okay? And and I've been fans of great teams. It's just, it's not, it's not something I'm used to or comfortable with. And I'm sure that's a personality defect. It has nothing to do with my fandom, by the way. I mean, I grew up a Patriots fan, and everyone's like, oh, t- the last 20 years were amazing. But the 20 years before that were awful. And so it's just kind of one of those weird things. I'm married into the Cleveland Browns situation, and Jesus Christ, that was horrible my entire life up until, I don't know, about five minutes ago. And and so I'm, I'm used to, I'm used to seeing the world through the eyes of losers. So I'm always going to have that perspective. I think Florida's a pretty good team. I think Dan Mullins is a hell of a football coach. That being said, let's roll through some of the rest of these games. I got a little note up here. We're going to start Friday night. I'm going to go kind of fast because I don't really know. I don't know how to do this, doing this show by myself. We're just going to talk about it. UCF. At Louisville on Friday night. I've got a couple of good games Friday night I wanted to talk about. UCF just beat the hell out of some FCS school, okay? 63-14. They're going to Louisville. Louisville finally got the offense going. Struggled to score against Ole Miss. Don't know if Ole Miss's defense is actually really good or not. Or if, or if Louisville just was having problems. They brought in Eastern Kentucky. They beat the crap out of them. Uh, 30-3. Finally, finally figured out how to score. I, I told you guys I think this UCF team could go undefeated this year. Um, I believe that they still can. Cincinnati is going to be an absolute bear, an absolute monster. That's going to be the American game of the year, by the way. I don't know if Louisville can hang with Central Florida. This is a, a bigger number than I was expecting. I thought you were going to get UCF in in like a weird Vegas zone, Okay. Not three, not seven. We were going to be somewhere between four and five. That that's where I thought they would make it. And I think I think books make that number based on the fact that they don't really know where to put the game. Okay, they think three is too little. They think a touchdown is too much. So they just kind of throw it somewhere in the middle and 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 let the sharps uh, and and the public kind of mix it up and get them to the right number. This line opened at seven and a half. And I thought, whoa, that's a, that's a little bit bigger than I was expecting. 
I don't know if it's enough points to make me bet Louisville, though. And that's that's the problem. Louisville has looked so inept when they play somebody that's half decent. Is Louisville's is Louisville's defense able to stop UCF? Because I think this UCF offense might not be as good as Ole Miss, but they ain't a whole lot worse than Ole Miss, okay? And is UCF's defense as good as Ole Miss? I don't know because they've kind of played comparable opponents. They they played Boise State, who I think is substantially better than Louisville, who is Ole Miss's opponent. And and then they played, you know, some also ran, and it doesn't matter. Um, I think UCF is going to to give Louisville fits. And, and when I thought initially this line was too big, I then thought, like I said, I don't I don't know if it's enough points to make me take Louisville yet. So I'm curious to see where this line goes uh, because it's bigger than I was expecting. So it wouldn't surprise me if it comes down a bit. But like I said, that's depending on the Sharps and the public believing in Louisville. Next big game, this is an interesting one. This is Maryland going to Illinois. Now, Illinois opens the season with a big win against Nebraska. Now, we don't think Nebraska is very good. Now, Nebraska finally beat the hell out of Buffalo this weekend. Uh, another game I lost. Illinois, outside of beating Nebraska, has not looked good at football at all. Now, they played two teams that I believe are good. Okay, They got beat at home by UTSA. And I, I think UTSA is an actually a really good team. Okay, I do not think UTSA is just some punk G5 school. I think they're pretty good. And then they just got beat pretty bad, 14 to 40, 42, 45, something like that, by Virginia. There's a world where Virginia's good. This is the problem. We're still early in the season. We're getting some data, but but I don't know what to do with all this data because I don't know how good these teams are. I like Bronco Mendenhall. I also like Brett Biedemann. And I wonder, is Brett's teams going to improve? Are they going to get better every week? They're going to have to. This line opened Maryland minus seven and a half. Not talking enough about Maryland. Maryland just beat Howard like 65 to nothing, 60 to nothing, something like that. It was a, it was just a drum. It doesn't matter. Once again, these stats don't matter. What I do know is Maryland's offense has been cooking ever since the season started. If Illinois wants to hang in this game, they are going to have to find a way to play some defense and slow this game down. I don't know that they're capable of it. This line opened Maryland on the road at five and a half. So you've got Friday night, two home dogs plus more than a touchdown on a Friday night. This is going to be a wild college football season. I'll tell you this. I like both road teams laying the points right now. I guarantee you one of these home teams is probably going to win a game outright. I've just watched college football too long. All right, these Friday night games where you're not competing with 20 other games, the whole country is watching, and and your fans all show up because it's an awesome atmosphere and it's a different kind of game. And and I just I've just seen it too long. If you just bet chalk here, it ain't gonna go well for you. But I'm having a hard time trusting the dogs uh, in, in this case, in this situation. So, like I said, I, I got a couple more days before I have to make make my picks and 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 put out the next video, and we'll see if they're on there. Next game up, the game I'm most interested in because this is the biggest test for Cincinnati until Notre Dame. Cincinnati is going to Indiana. I think this Indiana team's pretty good. I think Indiana got their ass beat by Iowa, and we're realizing Iowa pretty good football team. Okay, I don't take anything away from that. Now Indiana this weekend beat the crap out of Idaho. What I write down, fifty six to fourteen. Um, they finally, it's amazing. Michael Penix Jr. Looks like a completely different quarterback when he's not having to go against Iowa's defense. Isn't that spectacular? Like th- this is, this is what you got since a defense pretty damn good, but I don't think they're as good as Iowa. So Indiana is basically going to fall somewhere in the middle of beating up on Idaho and getting drummed by Iowa. Um, in the Cincinnati game. If they can score, they can keep this thing tight. If they struggle to score, I think they're going to struggle here because I like and trust Desmond Ritter 
more than anybody else on the field. If it comes down to – let's break this game down real quick before – because I'm sure this is going to be in the big game previews. I think both of these teams are really, really, really well coached. And I think they're going to play this game from the defensive side of the ball. Okay, I think they want they both want this to be low scoring. I think they both want this game to to not get out of hand and they just want to try to not make mistakes. The other team defensively, I think they're going to both be really aggressive on defense. Um, Which quarterback do you trust? Do you trust Penix or do you trust Ritter? And man, blind going into this thing. I trust Ritter. Once again, you got a road team favored going on the road. At home, or, you know, in a hostile environment. Now, this is a G5 school going to a P5 school. Indiana, pretty good. Not great, but pretty good. Cincinnati, minus three and a half. It's actually a little smaller than I was expecting. I thought this line would be around five as well. So, so, so they're not giving Cincinnati the due that I think some of these other schools are getting. The other side of that coin is I think, I think there's, a little bit more public respect on Indiana. I think we're seeing now after getting two data points on Iowa, oh, Iowa beating the hell out of Indiana, doesn't mean that our thoughts about Indiana being pretty good goes away. Indiana could be a hell of a football team. They just got beat by Iowa. Um, I'm excited to, to, to get more into the weeds of that game. And uh, and give you a lean one way or another. I, like I said, right now, if you made me pick this game today, and I'm going to go Cincinnati, I'm going to go with Desmond Ritter. I'm going to go with the quarterback because I like both these coaches. I think this. I think these teams want to play the same style, though. That's what I find most interesting about that game. We'll move on. Keep going down. Coming right down the road from my house. Half tempted to try to get a ticket to this game. Mississippi State Bulldogs are going to the University of Memphis. Now, Mississippi State just pulled off one of the biggest wins in Starkville in a long time. NC State's a pretty good team. They never trailed in this game. They ran the opening kickoff back. The game slowed down in the first quarter. Nobody could really score. Mississippi State's defense gave um, the Wolfpack all they could handle this entire game. They struggled to get points on the board. They struggled to cross the 50-yard line. It was it was rough. State took about a quarter and a half to get their offense rolling. When they finally did, Rodgers was making plays. Let me tell you what State's not going to run into. State's not going to run into a defense, okay? University of Memphis' defense is just a pool of water, all right? Sometimes it's slow to get around them because they got a lot of speed, but they're not hitting anybody. They're not stopping anybody. You, you just run right by them, man. They, State can name their, their score that they want. The problem is – this is a different offense that State has had to play so far. Mississippi State hadn't played anybody with the speed of Memphis. Now, Memphis doesn't have the guys in the trenches, so there's a world where they just bully the hell out of the offensive line. And, you know, Brandon Thomas and, you know, these other, you know, fast, speedy, skill guys for Memphis just can't get out in open field and, and they get gobbled up. I think Memphis is going to give them all they want. I think this is going to be a spectacular game. This number, Mississippi State minus three, way smaller than I thought. I thought this was going to be State minus a touchdown after beating NC State. I really did. I really did. Now, another time. All of these games have one thing in common. The only game where the home team is favored that we've hit on so far is Penn State. Man, you got a lot of road teams that are favors going into week three in some of these bigger games. Tread lightly if you like betting chalk. I, I'm, I don't know which ones are going to come out on top. I can't tell you that. I'm just going to tell you tread lightly, okay, because you just don't have a, a day of college football where road teams just chalk up wins all over the place. I think I got two more games. Yep, right here. This next one I think is – Super interesting. I don't think either of these two are as good or as big a games. Maybe I'm wrong. You might disagree. Oklahoma State's going to Boise State. Very disappointed in Oklahoma State this weekend. I thought Oklahoma State should be able to work Tulsa. 
I thought they would beat them up physically, and I thought they would score at will. Tulsa's defense didn't look like they wanted to play or was able to play the week before. OK State got by Tulsa by the hair of the chin chin chin. I thought that game should not have been as close, and and they played uh, sloppy. They let Tulsa hang around long enough to where Tulsa could have called them. They're not going to be able to do that against Boise. They're just not. Boise's not going to play that way. Boise played UTEP. UTEP's a bad football team. They're one of the worst FBS teams in the in the con, uh, country. That fifty four to thirteen, and 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 it just it just never was close. This line, I thought was going to be really close to a pick 'em. Thought there was a world where OK State, just like all these other games, was going to be a road favorite. Even going up to the Smurf turf, I was wrong. I was wrong, wrong. Boise minus three. Home team. Finally laying points. The more I think about it after I saw the line, the more I think it is the right number. Because if OK State was catching points, I do believe it would just be – or not catching points. If they were laying points, I apologize. I do believe the easy answer would be just to bet Boise. And this is a home team that you would have no problems betting you would you would not be afraid at all to to bet against, and and the more I thought of it, my initial reaction of what I think the line should have been was wrong, um, and I think the book's number's right. I I will be shocked if this number moves more than a half a point one way or the other, um, and I have no earthly idea what OK State team shows up. If the OK State team shows up, that's the best OK State they can be. I think they can win this game. I, I not think I can win. I think they will win this game. But Boise's a tough football team, and they are not going to go quietly. They play great at home, and uh, and this is going to be one of those late games that you're going to want to keep an eye on. Last game of the evening that I've got for you guys, and then I'll let you get out of here. Fresno State is going to what I think a team has – Resume wise, one of the best resumes in the country. UCLA Bruins beat the hell out of my LSU Tigers. Now I'm kind of wondering, was that a good win or not? UCLA coming off a bye. They played week zero. They played week one. Um, they got week two off. Got a little rest up. Fresno beat the hell out of Cal Poly. Fresno is a real good G5 tool school. They have given a couple of G5 uh, Power 5 teams fits so far. I think Fresno is a tough, tough team. With that being said, UCLA, UCLA, I think, might be a top 10 team this year. Now, now that could be some overreaction, and that could be I want them to be that good because then it makes them beating the hell out of my Tigers. Not so bad. I'm, I'm, I'm going through this like you're my therapist here, okay? I'm talking through my problems with you. I need UCLA to be good. So it's not so embarrassing that we got the hell beat out of us by them. The problem is, is if they're not a top 10 team, this number's way too big. This number opened at 10 and a half. I, I had no opinion on this. I, I tried to make myself guess what this number was going to be before I looked, and I couldn't come up with anything that I liked or was happy with. So I just looked. And when I saw 10 and a half, I don't know what I was expecting it to be, but I thought it was too big. This Fresno team is real good. They are tough. They're hard nosed. I'm excited to look into this game. This will be a game I'll be I'll be kind of deep diving more into and seeing what is out there in the world. There's so many more games that I could talk about. I know I didn't come close to hitting a fraction of the games that I'm sure you listened for, I don't know, 30 minutes, 35 minutes of this video so far. And and you thought, man, I just wasted my time. He didn't get to the game I wanted. Man, I'm rolling solo, guys. I'm doing the best I can, and uh, and this is these are the games that I I was interested in. I wanted to to look up them. I wanted to to dive into what they've recently done and, and who they recently are, and, and see what the numbers actually opened up as. We'll see. We'll see how this show evolves as we continue to go along. And and now that I'm I'm I'm, I'm working solo, I cannot wait for the Wednesday night big game show. I, I'm, I'm so excited for week three to get in, to actually start making some picks. I'm going to start giving out some winners. So far, I've given out 14 games. I'm 7-7 seven seven right at 500. The last two weeks, though, I'm 2-3, 2-3. Three, three. If 
you watched the f- uh, the uh, closing line show. I gave out five super dogs, though. I gave out five underdogs that I thought would win straight up. Now, if you have seen this show over the years, you know that I I like doing that. I like betting dogs straight up. I'm lucky to win one or two of those. Went four and one against them. Probably won't do that again the rest of the year. So if you missed last week, eh, tough. I gave you all the winners. I, 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 I shot all my bullets. If not, catch me Saturday. Wednesday evening, I'll be right back here. Saturday, we'll be back live, 10 Eastern. I'm, I'm on Central Time, so it's always weird doing the little little math here. Thank you so much. I appreciate you joining us. Share some share some comments with me. Tell me about what you want the show to look like, how you think I can, I can make it better. Also, this is your opportunity to tell me the games you want me to hit on Saturday because this is where I get that information for. I'll be checking those uh, comments. I'll be commenting back, especially if you say nice things or you just ask me questions. If you're a dick, I probably won't respond. For SportsBoardReview.com, my name is Christopher Giannini, and I am really glad you spent this evening with me.